Dan Dibley's back with us to talk some 49ers ahead of their first preseason game against the Green Bay Packers. That's August 12th. You can see it right here on KPIX. Giving you all the information there, Dibs, in case you didn't know. As for the quarterback this year, Trey Lance, thoughts on him heading into the season? I've heard some on the text line down in 95-7 the game say he's going to be a bust, and then two minutes later you hear Lewis Riddick say he's a sleeper for MVP. Yeah, the correct answer is yes. He's both things, and that's what you can expect from a rookie quarterback. 22 years old, the only athlete at 22 that you can totally bank on is Erling Haaland. Two goals for Man City today, also 22, by the way. Also six foot four, much like Trey Lance, but a quarterback in the NFL with two career starts. There's going to be growing pains. There's going to be times where you look at Trey Lance and think, oh, geez, he is a bust. And there will be other times when you look at Trey Lance and say, He's an MVP candidate in the making. I think ultimately this season will rise and fall with Kyle Shanahan and his play calling because Trey Lance will have some ups. He'll have some downs. I think you're going to see more of him Friday night than you normally would from a QB one or a first team quarterback. You're going to want to see more from Trey Lance. Let him get comfortable. Let him bank some reps with the first team offense. Come September 11th when the bullets fly for real, you're going to see that Trey Lance is a good quarterback. He's not going to be a bust. I don't think he'll be an MVP this year, but over the course of 17 games, he should progress. And by the end of the year, they should be a playoff team and he should look like a real one, a real starting quarterback. As for his receivers, Debo Samuel, George Kittle at the tight end position, playmakers. One guy we didn't mention a ton last year, but are expecting to mention quite a bit this year would be Brandon Ayuk. Are you buying into all the hype? I'm buying it. Absolutely. It's a buy for me on B.A. because all the reports are he put in the work in the offseason. Last year, he was in Kyle Shanahan's doghouse because he hadn't put in the work. The work ethic wasn't there. The practice routine wasn't there. And I really think that Brandon Ayuk benefited the most from Debo Samuel's absence. When Debo was requesting to be traded, when he scrubbed his social media account, where it seemed like maybe Debo wasn't coming back, Brandon Ayuk was the guy to step forward in the wide receiver room. He became the leader in that room by example, by voice, by work ethic, all the things you want your young receiver to do, he has done. And look at his numbers, Charlie, from the second half of last year, he really started to come on as a legitimate weapon. If you've got Debo on one side, Ayuk on the other, and George Kittle, hey, diddle diddle, Kittle down the middle, as Lorenzo Neal will say on the uh, Channel 5 postgame show this year. You've got yourself a trio of pretty nice weapons. I know come Halloween, you're going to be in your Buzz Lightyear outfit, eating your crunch bars on the couch. Where's Jimmy Garoppolo going to be come Halloween? I think he'll be in Seattle. And I have thought that Cleveland was the destination all along, but from Mary Kay Cabot to every other Cleveland expert we talked to, it doesn't seem like they're interested at all. Even if Deshaun Watson's six-game suspension goes up, the notion is that they're going to go with Jacoby Brissett. They don't seem to want Jimmy Garoppolo. The Rams, Matthew Stafford, he's got the mysterious elbow ailment. Well, Stafford came out and said, it's much ado about nothing. My elbow's fine. He won't go there. Seattle is still a place that be- desperately needs a quarterback. I don't think the Niners will trade Jimmy, but they're going to get to a point where they have to cut him if they haven't dealt him, and Seattle will be there for a Seattle signal caller scoop and score. Tough to say for a guy with a lisp. Let's finish with this. You had the midlife epiphany. You're going to be a father. Congratulations. Uh, Give me the details into that one. When are you guys expecting? Uh, Up in a month, mid-September, baby girl. It'll be my first daughter, my first uh, child born in 19 plus years. So uh, you can, you can go home again, Charlie. It's one of those things I think is like visiting the fountain of youth. Call me Ponce de Leon. Having a child doesn't make you feel older, but makes you feel young. Well, congratulations, Dan Dibley, and thank you for joining the show today. If you want to catch Dan Dibley's incredible takes, always spicy, Willard and Dibs, 9 to noon, 95-7 the game. Thank you, Dan. All right, Chuck.